If it were not for Paula Jean Weldon, the charming New England community of Bennington, Vermont, would not be very well known. The 18-year-old sophomore at Bennington College left her room on a brisk December afternoon in 1946 to go hiking, and she was never heard from again. On December 1, 1946, a mystery began. Paula spent some time with her roommate, Elizabeth Johnson, and worked a double shift at the campus dining hall. Later that night, she decided to go out. According to Johnson, Paula was wearing a red parka coat with a fur-lined hood, blue trousers, thick-soled top cider shoes, and a gold Elgin wristwatch with a black band. Johnson also remembered Paula's last words. I'm all through with studies. I'm taking a long walk. Paula had planned to take a long walk on a section of Vermont's Long Trail, which spans 272 miles from Massachusetts, Vermont to the Canadian border. Her attire and the cold weather suggested she did not intend to stay outside for more than a few hours. Shortly afterward, Danny Fager noticed Paula, or a girl in a compatible dress with the same physical description. The girl was allegedly seen running up and down the side of a gravel pit close to the college entrance by Fager who operated a gas station across the street from the college gates. Around 2.45 p.m., this would have happened right after Paula left her room. Lewis Knapp reported that he gave a ride to a teenage girl who was hitchhiking on Route 67A near the campus, 15 minutes after Paula disappeared. Knapp thought the girl looked like Paula, and he recalled having a brief conversation with her. The girl stumbled as she got into his truck, and Knapp cautioned her to be careful before dropping her off on Route 9 near the Long Trail. Paula was once more spotted shortly before 4 o'clock, this time by several individuals in Bigford Hollow, where she seemed to be moving in the direction of the trail. Paula disregarded Ernie Whitman's advice to wear thicker garments when entering the mountains and continued on her journey. By evening, Paula's roommate had grown concerned. Johnson waited until the following morning to speak to college president Lewis Webster Jones because she did not want to cause any additional worry. Jones called Paula's parents to ask if she had spent the weekend at home. Paula's mother became unconscious and fainted in her bed due to concern. Her father, W. Archibald Welton, an engineer, immediately traveled from his home in Stanford, Connecticut to Bennington. Upon arrival, Mr. Welton started assembling a search team, which included locals and students from Williams College and Bennington. However, most students gave up in frustration after a full day had gone by without any results. Mr. Weldon then requested assistance from the Connecticut and New York State Police. It is important to note that at that time, Vermont did not have a state police force. However, Almo Franzoni was a state investigator whose involvement was solely to increase the $5,000 reward for information. Several days passed by with no conclusion to the search for Paula. However, strange leads began to come in from various sources, including one from a waitress in Fall River, Massachusetts. She claimed to have served a disturbed woman who matched Paula's description as a customer for dinner. The lead particularly resonated with Mr. Weldon, who disappeared for 36 hours to follow it. However, no one knew Mr. Weldon's whereabouts until he arrived back in Bennington. 
This led some people to suspect that Mr. Weldon was somehow involved in his daughter's disappearance. It was reported that Paula and her father disagreed with her choice of partner. Mr. Weldon quickly jumped to the conclusion that Paula's boyfriend was responsible, despite having no evidence to support his claim. His only basis for this accusation was that a clairvoyant from Paul Vermont, had told him so. The police and their lack of professionalism was criticized by Mr. Weldon on December the 16th before he left for Connecticut. He was especially horrified that there were no documents preserved for the initial 10 days of the investigation. When news of this spread, reporters flocked to Bennington and recorded whatever they could. The Vermont State Police was eventually established in July of 1947 as a result of this unfavorable news. The final willing searchers were eventually forced to leave the long trail due to severe weather, believing that any remains of Paula Jean Weldon would likely be hidden and impossible to find. A lumberjack came forward nine years after Paula vanished. He asserted that he had been in Bigford Hollow when Paula disappeared and that he knew the location of her grave. Attorney Reuben Levin pressed the client until he finally confessed to fabricating the entire incident for notoriety. A skeleton was discovered in 1968 in a desperate attempt to finally solve the long-running cold case. Investigators scrambled. They were disappointed once more when it was discovered that the remains were far too old to belong to Paula. Independent investigations into the death of Paula Jean Welton have produced the typical conclusions. Either she went off with a boyfriend or got lost and died in the elevator. One of the stranger possibilities suggests looking into the infamous Bennington Triangle in southwest Vermont, where Paula and five other persons went missing between 1945 and 1950. Many others, like New England novelist Joseph Citro, think Paula's disappearance had a paranormal cause. Paula Jean Weldon's unsolved murder case is still officially open, but it seems unlikely it will ever be closed. Please share your thoughts with me. What do you think happened to Paula?